here with a very special guest in the building right now. We're worldwide with it right now, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> She's been doing quite a lot of great things in her career, just spreading her music. Lots of great knowledge, lots of support throughout everybody in the industry. Uh, spreading her love, peace, unity, and respect. Sophie Alpha. Hello. Thanks for having me. How you doing? Good. Yeah, I woke up nice today. I'm honestly starting to turn into a night owl. It's only been a few nights, but I'm like, if my sleep schedule is 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., so be it. Like, at least I slept. Get get in that work in pretty much, right? Because when it comes to music, like, for example, two nights ago, I was working on music from 11 to 7 a.m. And I could just, that's literally my natural caffeine. It's just like being in that environment, like with other creatives and collaborators and just working on tracks. Like, I think that that alone says everything for me is that I don't get tired from doing that. So it's like really big. Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, and, and speaking of your music that you've been doing uh, throughout the years that I've known you, you just recently released an album back in February of 2022 called Full Circle. Let's talk about your album and you know, what kind of led you to the creativity behind that. Yeah. Um, so that's my second project that I've done. And I've kind of turned into calling it like a mixtape because it's more of like a showcase of what I can do and like my capability. So I have a lot of vocals in the high range and also in the low range. And then I'm on different kinds of beats like go-go, R&B, pop, house, techno, all in like 14 songs. And so I think it's just an example of like my drive and like my capability of producing. So that was like, I made that album in nine months, I think. And that was because it was a mix of like, I recorded it back home in Massachusetts. And then I also recorded about half of it here on Island. Um, and I just really wanted to push out like, since I started, since I decided to make music, I've been like, okay, I don't want to be talking about it. I want to be showing people, like, I mean what I'm saying, you know? So I think that's why uh, Full Circle came to be, because it plays into the title of the album. My career in music has come full circle, because, like, I didn't know this was a thing, like, making money off creativity, off your, like, passion like that. Um, so when I discovered that during the pandemic, I was just like, looking at you know connecting my dots my past and everything i was just like for some reason i was um how do you say like justifying or giving explanation to like why i'm so interested in music because again i didn't see i didn't know that this was a thing um for whatever reason i didn't know it was an option but that's how i should say it. i didn't know it was an option and so i look back at my life and i'm just like my entire life i've been involved in music in some way shape or form so yeah, I, I don't know if that um, album is going to be on Spotify much longer. I think it will, because I'm actually releasing a single uh, in the month, August 25th. And I'm going to release it under Sophia Alpha. So like my name, but two words instead of one. And so I think I'll leave both pages up because why not? But it's definitely going to be a turn from like, this was me showing you guys what I can do. This is me actually doing, you know? I like doing my best. You mentioned about a new single that you're going to be releasing. Can you tell us about the new single? You know, what is it about? What's the title? Mm -hmm. Like that. Yeah, it's called Test Run. And uh, it's one of those songs for me that like, I just, I wasn't thinking about anybody. I wasn't thinking about an experience. I just wrote it. So like, I have a few songs already out. For example, Infatuated, the song, um, the beat from YouTube is called Infatuated. So I was like, I like that word. I've had that feeling before. I'm going to write about it, you know? So I have some songs that people are like, oh, who's this about? I'm like, literally no one. And that's the best part. So like for my birthday bash, the concert, I introduced this one song that I called You're Not Shit, but it's going to, it's YNS, You're Not Shit. Um, and I was like, I wrote this about no one, but it relates to someone or like it applies to someone, you know? So it's like one of those uh, test run. It got its title because basically the hook is like, I was your lust, not your love. I wasn't in this for fun. Um, I give you a test run, meaning like, you know, a trial. I tried it out. It didn't work out. I wasn't valued, kind of. That's what I'm saying. And it's definitely like R&B, rock, 
I'd say, because it has electric guitar. And I don't um, believe in like putting myself in a box of a genre or like a style, but I definitely am leaning towards um, more R&B because that's like, it's just very easy for me to talk about my feelings that way and um, or write about my feelings that way. And then implementing a lot more live instrumentals like guitar, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, um, the keys, stuff like that. So really trying to pick at people's, you know, heartstrings and then, yeah, I'm really excited about it because I made it with my best friend as well. Um, and it's just a piece of art. <laughs> you mentioned full circle earlier. Um, I gotta ask you, you know, you're from Massachusetts, you know, I live in Hawaii. What has that been like for you living here in Hawaii? And if you had to pick a place that you had to show somebody that's never been to Hawaii, where would it be? Mm, good questions. Um, people ask me a lot, like, how was my transition? Because obviously, like, I was like, that's so classic of me to go the furthest place I could. Like, like honestly, this is the furthest point I could have chosen the U.S. to go away from home. And for me, it was easy because my mom's actually from the Maker Republic. So, like, island girl lifestyle definitely already so and my mom kind of two people ask like how is your family okay with you like it's always curious how people are like how are you able to do that to leave your family like that or were they concerned or whatever and my mom she initially didn't really want me to come this far but then she was like she visited I think she moved me in this when she came and she was like yeah this place is gonna be good for like your anxiety and just like how I live so definitely uh this is home and if I had to choose a spot, somewhere with a view. I just went to the tide pools for the first time not too long ago. So just that area alone, yeah, that's my spot, yeah. So definitely, like, that drive, the east coast of Oahu, I make sure to take people that visit me there at least once because that drive alone is, like, chef's kiss. <laughs> so I definitely, that's why I would take someone. So, sure, I mean... You could have gone anywhere in the world, but why Hawaii? I think it was just destined. A lot of, like I mentioned before, connecting my dots and stuff. I think a lot, like, I don't I don't know if it's because of imposter syndrome or something, but, like, I, f I have to find reason for everything. And I know everything happens for a reason, too. I try not to dwell on or overthink a lot, but it's just, like, um, I applied to colleges. I'm, I'm here because I went to school here. And this was actually, like, I lived on Hawaii for free my first year because they gave me that much scholarship. So, like, uh, odd enough, like, the all the colleges on mainland would have charged me, like, I would have been in debt. But because I went to HPU, I studied here, and it, it like, brought me to the island, really. So, and it, it's kind of another full circle moment. It was, like, I was checking my spam email in high school, and I never do that, like, period. And something inclined me to that day, and I saw an email from my college. And I was like, wait, there's schools in Hawaii. Like I have like a fucking, <laughs> a, like a dumb moment. And I was like, duh. So I applied and it was instant after that. Like I'm going here. Because just recently you graduated from college. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. What did you get your degree in? Um, so I was studying two tracks. I was doing international studies and finance. I graduated with international studies. So I'm done with that. But I'm about a semester a little over a semester left of my finance degree so that's something I'm very much procrastinating on very much pushing but I have to figure that out before the fall because I already did a leave of absence because I'm doing my tour um which we can talk about as well I'd love to but uh yeah I don't know if I'm going to go back because I'm like I already walked the aisle I already graduated like you know so I have to figure it out but I might graduate again next year with a degree in finance but as of right now I'm educated Miss Worldwide. <laughs> International Studies degree. <laughs> and you mentioned about this tour. What does this tour have to be about? Is it work related? Uh, yeah, it's uh, music. I'll be a part of, um, it's called Storm Tour, with this group called Eternal Records. And I did a, a set or a show with them in Miami last year. And it went really well um, before and after I was like connecting with people that were involved with it. And then after my performance, I believe I did three songs. Um, I had a couple people approach me and I've actually worked with them. So that was a year ago, a year and a half ago, somewhat something like that. Um, and since then I've made music with these people. So like that, just that alone, that exposure and like those connections happening, it makes it of value for me. So I was like, okay, they have about like 20 
plus cities in their lineup from August to October. And I chose the cities that I know people in that like I know I can like bum on their couch. And then also to get my friends' friends to come and enjoy the night and like just meet local artists or, or also not local artists like myself. And yeah, I'll be in like in order. It'll go Houston and then I think Brooklyn, uh, Charlotte, Atlanta, Miami. So I'll be doing like a week in each of those cities and then ending it with the show and then moving on to the next one. Okay. Now, yeah. got to ask you, you're from Massachusetts. Is there anything that you miss about being back home in Massachusetts? Uh, probably the fall. Like that was one thing my first year here. And I tell this to a lot of people. I'm just like around Halloween time, around October when I first moved here. Um, so that's like what, two, three months in. I was feeling really, really weird. Like something was wrong. I couldn't explain it. Um, and then Halloween came and went and I was like, holy, it's because the leaves aren't changing. Nothing around me is changing when that's what I've been used to. You know, that's what I like. I'm, I'm accustomed to that. So when I recognized that it was like my whole conception of time, like came back. Like I was really just floating for two months because I did it or a month or so in between like fall or um, summer and fall. Cause I just didn't know what was happening. <laughs> So I wasn't used to it. So that's, I definitely miss, I'm very excited to, that's another reason why I'm going home this season specifically for fall, because I'm not going to go home during the winter. That's not necessary. And then summer, I'd rather be traveling and just fall is definitely like the best season over there. Where in Massachusetts are you from? I got to ask you that question. Mm -hmm. I'm from uh, Wayland. So it's, well, that's where I grew up. And then I was born in Boston raised a little bit outside of Boston. And then we moved to a suburb called Wayland, which is by Framingham and Natick, which are like bigger cities, I guess. So I'm from the suburbs technically, but now my family, they're still in Boston and stuff, my dad's side, but now my mom lives closer to the city as well. So when I go back, I stay closer to the city. Yeah, I really, I really do love being from there. Like, again, I'll, I'll say for the third time, like all the connecting the dots and stuff. I'm like, everything seriously is for a reason. Like, I'm so happy so far, grateful for how my life has been going because it feels so divine. Like, uh, I can't go a week without seeing somebody with a Boston Red Sox hat. I can't go a week without hearing about Boston, Boston, Boston. I'm like, I just always feel relevant. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? It, it's a good feeling because especially with what I'm doing, it's like, yeah. You talk about all the things that you've been doing. I've heard your album and... Uh... What can I say? It's a great album for sure. Two of my favorite songs off of your album. Princess and the Frog and Two Most. Yeah, so um, this is nice that that gets brought up. Thank you for listening to my album. Um, so likewise to how I told you earlier with like the song I Don't Need Your Touch and how that was just like a song I made to make it. Um, the What's it called? Um, Princess and the Frog. That song, the only reason why that song exists is because I had like an hour extra of my studio time and I wasn't, I thought I would, you know, use the time that I planned for, whatever, whatever. So when he was like, okay, what do you want to work on next? I was like, what? Like, and then I just went to my beats and I had these beats from my friend, um, his name's Swim Jones from Kahala. And I just pressed a random one and I kind of liked it. And then we're like, okay, fuck it. We'll put this on. So I didn't even listen to the full beat and we were like, okay, we'll work on this one. So we throw it on and I just had like three fortune cookies in my, or three fortune, fortunes, I guess, in my pocket. And that's how I started the song. Okay, I'll use this, this line. And so I wasn't even thinking about my album at that point, that project full circle. So with that song, I don't need your touch. I like to think that kind of kickstarted the genre of that project because Princess and the Frog is similar um, sounding beat. So then once I had that done, I was like, now I have two songs in a similar style. And then I have all these other beats. So that's really, it kickstarted. Okay, I need, to, I need to make 10 more songs just like this, you know? So that's interesting that you like that one as well, because it reminds me with like, I don't need your touch. I was just doing that to help a friend. And it's a lot of people's favorite songs so, or songs. So I'm just like, that's really curious. Because like, that's probably one of the songs I put the least effort in, you know? So then, yeah. And two months, same producer. Uh, and also having the same producer helped a lot like with the fluidity of the album because there's been times where like I'll shuffle it or something and then it transitions so well and I'm like I didn't mean to do that but like it sounds so good and it sounds planned 
Um, but yeah, Two Months is one of the songs I did write about a person. And that was about um, some guy. So I have the logic or the principle that not to date while I'm getting like in school because like I'm focused on school, you know. Um, but during COVID, I took a semester off. And so I found myself kind of boot up, I guess, back home in Massachusetts. And so that song is about him. We're still friends now. We started as friends. And then um, we dated for like two, three months. And that's why the song is two months because they're called two months. Um, because like, I thought we knew what we were doing. That's the lyric. Um, but it just didn't work out. And we're still friends again. Like it, we broke up or stopped being involved like that for reasons outside of us. So like, that's also good for me because like less emotional damage. But um, yeah, that one I could very, I even showed him the song and he's like, yeah <laughs> there's um funny story i was with some guy and he's a leo i don't know that to me that matters because like he he asked me he's like oh so now are you gonna write a song about me and i was like what the like can you be any more of a leo like you know so that just makes me laugh because like i did write the song about someone showed him it and he was just like uh it's interesting to hear that that's how you felt you know you released your ep april 29th and it's entitled SOS. And in talking about and in talking about your EP, what can you say has been the growth and the development to your album that you released? And uh, talk about before I rest in peace. That's another favorite song that I like of yours. That's a fan favorite. That EP. First of all, I'm so I'm not like. I don't hold grudges. I'm not bitter like that, but I'm just like, for example, for full circle because of the genre, I'm like, okay, I I walked so that Beyonce, so that Drake, so that Izzy, uh, Iggy Azalea could like run because they once I released that within the same year or within a year, these big artists were also jumping onto that genre. So I feel like I was ahead of the, you know, of the game with that one. Um, similarly with SOS, I'm like, okay, SZA, like, but. For me, it's different. SOS stands for Sophia's On to Something because that's the first project I ever dropped. That was um, the one where I was like, I don't want to be talking about, oh, I'm doing music, I'm doing music. I want something tangible to show me, to show people like this is what I'm doing. And like, it's interesting because that was my first project. I'm kind of going back into that sound, meaning like more sing, singer, singer, songwriter, more guitar, more R&B, more, yeah, singer, songwriter. And so... To me, that's another curious thing where it's just like I from the jump was already doing what I should have been doing, which is like singing about my feelings and stuff. Because when I first started making music, it started with writing. So um, I'm a songwriter first. And like a lot of my songs, they come from at least from that that era of time when I first started making music. All of my songs came from journaling. And the that project started with the song My Dreams Keep Me Up at Night. And that's the first song I ever wrote. And it came to be because I kept having nightmares like back to back and I never get nightmares. So I was like, what is going on? And it was so strong like the third night that it happened that I had to write about it. And I like reflected on my like iPhone notes and then I looked at it and I was like, there's kind of like a rhythm here, you know, like I could see something in it. So then I go on YouTube, look up beats, find a beat, slap it together. And I was like, done. So at that point in time, I was, I would like skim through beats on YouTube and then put them in playlists for like moods or lyrics and stuff. And then when I was ready, I would go back to that playlist and then put my lyrics on top of the beats or freestyle, whatever, whatever. And I was doing that. I was able to come up with five songs, which is the EP. And um, before I rest in peace, that one, I'm not even sure what I wrote it. Oh, even crazier. Okay. You, you're you picking the perfect songs to talk about. <laughs> So before I rest in peace, I actually used the lyrics from this poem I made when I was, I did a gap year in India before I came to college. And I've always loved music again. And like, I've, I've noticed that whenever I feel really overwhelmed, not so much anymore, probably because I know what I'm doing with it. But whenever I feel overwhelmed or just like, like WTF, you know, I'll go and write. That's what I do. I'll, I'll, I'll write about it. And so um, when I first started making music back uh, during the pandemic, I looked through my notes because I knew I wrote poems and stuff. I knew I had some kind of sentiments on my phone. So I was using those for inspiration. And I actually used a poem for like the hook of Before I Rest in Peace. So that's like words of mine from 2018 used when I was in 2020, 2021, you know, it plays with my logic or principle of like 
I want to use everything I've created in some way, shape, or form. But I got to ask you, of course, when did you realize you wanted to have a career in music? And what other career? Hmm, that's a good question. Because now, let's say I've been making music or I decided to be making music three years ago. Like, I actually released my EP SOS on my birthday, which was a year since the point that I decided this is the career I want to go with. So, like, every year on my birthday, it's, like, for me, that's another year of my career, basically. Um, and, like, I wrote, I, I mean, I talked about this in one of my YouTube videos. It's called Introducing Me. And I listened to it the other day because um, I'm the type, like, to record, edit, upload, never look at it again. So then... I just did recently and I was like, holy, like I was on something like I was onto something because um, I said like during the pandemic, I actually like right when COVID started, like let's say March 2020, um, that January I had started to get really bad depression, like for the first time that bad. Um, and so I said in that video, the introducing me, I was like, I lost, I knew I was depressed because I lost interest in everything like that I was about. But through that loss of interest, I found my passion, which was making, like expressing myself creatively and just being a creator and artistic person with music. Um, so I think that's a beautiful thing. And that's really where it came from was like during COVID. Uh, I remember I was in my dorm right before we like had to leave. Um, and I was just writing in this journal. And I was like, I was like, this is the kind of catalyst was like, I was listening to classical music and I could feel everything in my body, like every violin, every cello, every flute, like it was crazy. And I was just like, this isn't normal. Like this shit is not normal. So then I thought about it more. I was like, I can't like now, well, what I was trying to say earlier was three years into it now, I don't see myself doing anything else. There is no plan B, like this is it. So um, I like thinking about what was I going to do beforehand? Like what, what I was pl probably planning on graduating in college doing internships you know making my way um making money different hustles and stuff but i was probably just gonna end up like i don't know being an entrepreneur with a nonprofit, which i can still do and i'm definitely still interested in expanding my entrepreneurship but yeah i wouldn't i don't know i probably would have been involved with something with kids or something like that talk about three years of doing music uh, i gotta ask you what do you enjoy about music? Since it's been about three years, is there anything that you wish you would have known when you first started out in your career? Mm. Let's start with inspirations would be, so I went to this like this past weekend for Slap Radio. They had a like a three-day kind of function. So the second day, Saturday, they featured a producer here, a local producer called Bimwala. And you know, he got asked the same question. And for me, that's my biggest thing. I'm like, don't ask me who my favorite artist is because I listen to literally 2,500 artists a year. I can't tell you who my favorite artist is. Um, and then he said that his inspiration comes from his friends. And I'm like, that's facts. Cause like, you know, those people, you're working with these people and you're allowing them to influence you. So yes, my greatest inspiration should be the, like, you know, the people I'm surrounding myself through music. So I think that's my answer as well as my friends. Like I mentioned my best friend that um, I did the song, I Don't Need Your Touch With. He's in LA working now in a big studio. Like he's literally like, there's celebrities that I would never think that I would see like just walking in and out of there. So I'm like, that's dope. Like, and now too, my mother married and I have a stepbrother who's also on that level, but he doesn't like being famous, whatever. So he's reserved, which I respect. But like, I have these two important people in my life that like, I know are doing what I want to be doing. So I just got to keep on doing so then I can like meet them at their level, you know, cause I'm not expecting any, anything right now. I'm not asking them for help because I'm not ready yet. So I want to be there for when the time comes for me to like, you know, truly take advantage of the opportunity. And then, yeah, one thing I would tell myself in my second year, um, I don't know how I came across it, but I applied for this scholarship called 1000 dreams fund. And it's for college students, for women in STEAM. So like science, tech, um, engineering, art and math. And they added the art part for music. So I applied and I actually got a thousand dollars, which I think the highest grant was like 12 or $1,500. And like there was lower too. So I got a pretty good amount. And that actually paid for all the beats of Full Circle. So it's like, again, 
tell me I'm doing something wrong because I know I'm not. Like, you can't tell me that I'm not doing something right. So that's one thing I would tell myself is like, there's grants in this thing. There's things you keep, because I stopped like after high school, I was OD, like applying to a lot of things, scholarships, money, fun, da, da, da. that's how I was able to come here to Hawaii. And um, I don't know, I, I guess I kind of just burnt out. So like now finishing college and everything, I never applied for a scholarship again. Like after my sophomore year of college, I stopped applying. Um, and like, even now I'm like, I need to apply to this, this and that, because those are opportunities to take advantage of. But if you know the answer will always be no if you don't ask so that's my biggest thing is like seek more opportunities and don't settle and what do you enjoy about music and then that was the last question mm, right right um there's no wrong answer <laughs> but you know and just the fact that one thing again with the whole connecting the dots thing in high school throughout high school i would go to, and since middle school really i would go to a lot of concerts and I just really enjoyed live music, you know, being in that environment of people enjoying having a good time. Um, and now, like, I would look, you know, I'd be a, the person in the crowd, take a step back and look at, like, what's going on around me. And I'm just like, if the fucking, if the performer says, put your hands up, what does everybody do? You know, like, like, that's so much control and power through music. And so that's one thing I enjoy about it, too, is that, like, a lot of people aren't conscious or aware of like the influence music has like I don't listen to drill very often I don't listen to anything violent because I'm like I'm not an aggressive angry person so if I were to listen to that consistently I think I would become more angry and like easily triggered so I'm very much like whenever I get the chance or whenever it comes up I definitely tell people I'm like you have to be aware of what you're listening to and what you're putting into your ears and your brain so it's just like that's one thing I enjoy is that it's there's a quote and it was like physical art, like, you know, paintings and stuff is how we decorate our physical space. And then music is the way we decorate our audible, like air space, you know? So that's like my favorite thing is just, I can have it on for hours. I appreciate silence as well, but like just being in music for me, it's like, I could do this for my whole life. So um, there were definitely things like growing up that I would force myself to do or like learn. I would fall asleep at my computer, like, drained you know but this stuff like i can i have the energy for it so that i think that's my favorite part is that it energizes me for sure now you mentioned about you know just being able to be in peace being able to be in relaxation you mentioned earlier about anxiety how has being in hawaii helped you with anxiety man <laughs> I'm on island time like I think I used to be get very anxious like willing to get in a car accident like anxious to get to a place you know um but now it's like we'd rather have you here alive than in an accident trying to get here so it's just like I definitely that's kind of like imprinted on me it's just like take your time don't rush you're gonna get there um and just having the space to freaking breathe you know like like in Massachusetts, it's a lot of hubbub of like, it's money there. There's a lot of money there. And it's because people are dedicating their lives to making money and running for money. When for like, since I, after India, my time in India, like I essentially just worked and then like back home and I saved up money. So I wasn't working for like almost a year, which was like unheard of for me. And in that time, like that also played into my anxiety because I was like budgeting and then I felt weird not working like that that's kind of sad, like not being able to, I remember my freshman year of college, I wrote down, like, figure out a way to not work and be peaceful and have peace with that, with not having a job, you know? And so it worked out because then after I had tried to do that, manage that, COVID happened. So it's not like I had a choice, but thank God I was training myself up until that point to handle not working, you know? So then being on island too, like the Aina provides for me, I guess, like everything is just I meet who I have to meet, like, since being here. I don't know. I just feel like as long as I continue to move with well intentions and, um, like, with gratitude, you know, everything is going to kind of, like, a zipper, like, just, you know. So as long as I continue to follow and try to be aware of all the signs and stuff, like, I think I'm doing, like, I'm supposed to be, I, I tell myself that, like, I'm supposed to be where I am when I'm there, you know. Talk about the memorable experiences, talk about the things that have gotten you to the place that you're at right now. Talk about music in regards to R&B vibes and just 
doing all different types of different genres and music and whatnot. But if you would describe yourself as an artist, you said that would be um eclectic for sure. Cause like Say like I said, word. I listen. Say? That's an A plus word right there. One more time. <laughs> That's an A plus word right there. Oh yeah, eclectic. Like one thing, um, and this is let's say a 75, 80, 90% of people, and this is whoever feels the need to like be outspoken about it. Whenever they hear my music, they tell me it's unique. And so I don't know if you saw my story. Maybe a month ago, I was like being told my music is unique and that I sound like nobody else is a good thing. Yeah, like, right? Like, just making sure. Um, because, like, I'm just doing, making, I think the secret is to do what you want to do. I'm making the music that I want to hear. I'm making the music that I enjoy. I could definitely just listen to my music all day. Um, I try not to because I'm like, I'd rather, I'm making music for people as well, not just for myself. So it's like, but as long as I'm enjoying what I'm doing, like, I, it's fine. Because I'm also, I trust my judgment. I trust my taste in music because whenever I show people playlists or new songs or whatever, they instantly save it. You know, they add it to their playlist, add it to their Spotify, whatever. So I'm like, I, I think I have a pretty good taste in music so if i'm enjoying my taste or my music then i'm like i think i'm straight you know so that's kind of like a affirmation for me is like or affirming thing where it's like if i can enjoy my music knowing that i enjoy a lot of other good music i'm straight what are the future goals and what are the future projects i know you mentioned about a tour and whatnot that you're doing but what are the future goals what are the future projects that we should be looking out for yeah, um, future projects, definitely Test Run coming out August 25th. Uh, that'll be on every platform. Yeah, I have that project. And then I'll also be releasing two more singles following that before February or by the time February comes. And then we have the date uh, February 23rd, which would be exactly two years or a day, um, 366 days after uh, for my album. So I'm releasing my first R&B like founded or um R&B based album so yeah look out for that 223 I'm like not sure how many songs I want it on it I'm definitely going to be having like listening parties um kind of like think how do you say like a you know when a, they do product testing so I want to like try to do that with my songs and stuff and be like have more discernment because I have songs from 2020 2021 that I want to be on this album but I'm like, if I'm making more and more music in this year, I can bump them out and forget about it. It's so whatever. But I definitely would love to have feedback and like make it. It's not a collaborative thing, but that is a collaborative process. So I'm looking forward to just like allowing more people to like be a part of my journey, basically. It's an R&B project, of course. What makes it different from your last album released? And as far as these brand... Uh, these these two new singles are gonna you're gonna be releasing. Mm, time the time put in for sure. Like I mentioned, um, SOS I made that in about eight months or I want to say eight months, and then Full Circle I made that in nine months. This one already has been a year in the making, more than a year because it has the songs from you know the past. But like for example, Test Run I recorded that in August. I've been sitting with it, and then we finalized it this past month. So that's technically a year in the making. Um, and I've always wanted to do that because before I was very like one song a session, only touch on the song once and like it's done. I don't want that anymore. I want to be able to say I worked on this song for this amount of time. It had it took up this much time of my life and it shows, you know, I think it shows when you put more time and effort in things. So I've definitely been wanting to get to that part, like trusting the process. I remember when I was making my album, I was rushing the engineer because I'm like, I need this by February 22nd um both projects have songs that aren't technically finished and he told me he's like you can't rush this shit <laughs> and i'm like you're right you're right i i can't so let's just try our hardest to get it done because like he kind of humbled me in that way he was like you can't rush this art and i'm like okay you're right so that's my biggest difference in like allowing myself the time to make it the song i'd be proud of saying it's out like you know instead of rushing the last two projects very last minute like within, I would say two, four weeks, everything was submitted a week, day of even. 
but this project coming up, the album, it's going to be finalized before 2024. It's going to be uploaded by 2024, not touched after the fact. So it's definitely more, for me, that's like more professional, more prepared. Uh, three, I'm going to do three. But this is insider information because I'm not like announcing. I know I've, uh, I've said stuff about an album coming out, but I'm just going to be focused on singles. So then by the time 2024 comes, I'll be like, oh, by the way, those three singles I just dropped, they're on an album. So it's like teasing people basically. And like, honestly, the secret with my my logic with the albums, I mean, sorry, the singles is like you build up more hype every time you drop something, right? So it's like, so I definitely want like with each single, I want more followers on my platforms like Spotify because it, it notifies you whenever an artist drops something. So I want more followers each time on Spotify and YouTube. And just people to get notified more so that they can expect, like, I want it to be like all the pre-saves, you know, like pre-save test run. Once that's uploaded, I'm going to be pushing that through people's throats because I'm like, once it's pre-saved and then it's uploaded, it gets instantly added to your playlist. And then let's say you're shuffling and then it comes up. You're like, when did I save that? And it's like, oh, right. So I'm trying to build up hype and then they're R&B-esque. And then also like I kind of rap in them too. I go a little harder. So I have one song that I just finished, or not finished, but I just remade, I guess, with my friend, um, the one from LA. And it's called Where Are My Friends, when it was originally called Connected. Like, I've only recorded on that beat twice, once by myself, and then once with my friend. And the one with my friend, like, such a different vibe, so much stronger, so much better. Um, And I think I can credit it to not working alone on it, like, mostly. But also just, like, being more experimental with it. So I'm going to drop, that's going to be the third single, Where Are My Friends? Once that's done, I'm, I'm going to also be pushing that, that down people's throats because it's different and I love it. And then the second um, single is probably going to be more acoustic. So I'm trying to like show different vibes, but still be within that like frame of this is what I'm doing. Well, I'm definitely proud of all your success in music and I can't wait. Appreciate your time. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Appreciate you for having me.